Hello and welcome to web learning where knowledge is shared. In today's episode I'll show how to use the UART with the DMA. If you'd like to win a free nuclear board, then register to the site and click on the notification. The free demo request is only available for 48 hours from the time I post the video, as I'm not able to send many boards or deal with many requests. So please remember to click on the notification so you'll know exactly when I'm loading a new video. So let's get started. So in today's tutorial, I'll show how to use the UART with DMA, how to generate the code with the Cubemix, and how to create a simple loopback example with DMA. The first two I already covered in many tutorials, and I'll put the link so you can go back and learn how to use the Cubemix tool and how to use the UART. In this tutorial, you'll quickly see how I'm configuring the UART with the Cubemix and how to send and receive data using the nuclear board. As always, this presentation was made by ST, and I'm able to present it to you. So how the UART with DMA works? So first of all, after we set the Cubemix, the Cubemix generates some code. So the peripheral initialization, the DMA stream for the interrupt, and the DMA RQ handler. The user itself needs to write some code, the start process with DMA end of transfer, and then also the end of the process and if anything goes wrong. How does it work? So when the software is working, the UART and DMA are initialized. Then the UART and receive buffer are receiving the data from external source. When the DMA buffer is full, you get an interrupt. Then the code process the interrupt. Then the buffer receives in the callback. And if there is an error, we're dealing with this. So first of all, we need to always define some buffer because we're receiving and sending data. So buffer definition is transmit buffer receive buffer. Sending and receiving methods will, when using DMA is how user receive DMA and how user transmit DMA. And then under user code begin for, as before, we put the callback of the interrupt. So again, if you don't know how to use the stm 32 cubemix I highly recommend it to go and see the previous videos. I left some links before and I'll leave some links after. So I'll go through the cubemix quite quickly. So we start with new project, board select. I'm using as always the L053 Nucleo. Double click. Do you want all peripherals to the default mode? No, because I need to load the push button and LEDs instead of redoing everything. So the software loaded all the pinouts and everything the way it is set correctly. I'll go and choose your at one, asynchronous, clock configuration, Everything is fine. I'll just push this up to 32 megahertz. Not that it matter. And here I'll set the UART. I'll use only 9600 because I don't have any crystal. And now I need to set the DMA. I'll do add. I'll do a receive. The priority gives me a chance to decide if few DMA is coming at the same time, which will be dealt first. Now, if few DMAs have the same priority, it's first come, first serve. If it has different priorities, then it depends on the priority. Wh whoever has a higher priority will get served. In the DMA request, I have two options, either normal or circular. And then I can do increment the memory peripherals. And of course, I'm doing memory because I'm receiving. Click apply. Then I'll do also the same thing to the transmit, give it the same priority, click apply. And that's about it. You can see that the Cubemix already set the DMA channels interrupt and I'm not even able to turn it off. And nothing else needs to change. Click OK. We can generate the code, give the project a name. I've set everything, click OK. Open project. Let's add the code in the correct places. So here is our buffers. This is how to send and receive with the DMA. And right towards the end, the callback. Now I have here a nope. And again, this is if we want to debug. The debugger will never stop at the function. So we're putting just a nope, so we'll be able to break this. Let's compile. Uh, it compiled correctly, zero errors or warnings. 
So let's see that it works. I've opened a terminal window. Let's download the code. Let's write something. And it's not working because I forgot to put the jumper between PA10 and PA9 because now the DMA works and it sends the data automatically to PA9 and I'm not having anything to send the data back to PA10. So the best way is to connect between PA9, this pin, and PA10, this pin. So let's give it a try again. So as you can see, it's working just fine. I'm sending and receiving using the DMA. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe to get notification when I upload the new tutorial. Thank you.